I'm Rebecca Udden. I'm the Executive Artistic Director of Main Street Theatre, and I'm the director of the first play in the Elliot Trilogy, Elliot, A Soldier's Fugue. I'm Jerry Ruiz, and I'm the director of Water by the Spoonful at Stages, and this is the middle installment of that trilogy. I'm Ken McLaughlin, I'm the Artistic Director of Stages, and I'm here to talk about Water by the Spoonful. I'm Daniela Zamandias, I'm the director of The Happiest Song Plays Last, being presented by Mildred's Umbrella. I'm Jennifer Decker, the Artistic Director and founder of Mildred's Umbrella Theater. Becky Uden and I had lunch, and we talked about Stages and Main Street were both putting one of these plays in their seasons. She said, why don't you guys do the third one as a reading? I just fell in love with the writing and thought the whole notion of the trilogy was just lovely. And then when Stages announced that they were doing Water by the Spoonful, um, I just uh, called Ken. In conversations with Main Street and Mildred's Umbrella, it just all came together um, in a perfect way to produce this beautiful Pulitzer Prize winning play. Because Mildred's Umbrella is focused on uh, plays by women, it fits in our mission and also just being a part of a trilogy with Main Street Theater and Stages is a huge deal for Mildred's Umbrella. It follows the story uh, mainly of Elliot, who is a character in all three plays in the trilogy. We first meet Elliot uh, when he's getting ready to ship off to Iraq because the men in his family are soldiers. His grandfather was a soldier his dad was a soldier. It's such a heartfelt, honest depiction of struggle in a family, of pain in a family, and the underlying constant desire to connect in a family, um, no matter what the issues are. Water by the Spoonful is about addiction and abandonment and loneliness, but it also has themes of recovery and redemption and family. And so it's a really powerful play that deals with these serious subject matters, but leaves you with a sense of hope that human connections can help us overcome those obstacles. The Happiest Song Plays Last is about home and, and family, both as a location, but also as, as the feeling of that that you carry in your heart as you traverse the world, and, um, and what it means to come home and what it means to keep home. I think it's a lovely character arc to see him go from Elliot, where he's young and he's in the middle of serving four tours, and then to Elliot in The Happiest Song Plays Last, where he's finding himself as a civilian and finding himself as an artist and falling in love. It's very funny as well. Like, it, it, you know, plays that are such incredible um, depictions of life uh, can be, can take us on the whole journey. So you get your joy and you get your pain. And in this particular case, you get uh, stunning poetry. Um, so sophisticated, uh, so natural, and yet so elevated. The thing I love about Kira's writing is it's so, so human. It's clear that this playwright loves these characters um, and manages to put them in a modern context where she's also able to look at the issues that create the tensions in our relationships or in our society. Her characters are complex and believable and her plays are very dense and very moving but also very funny. She represents one of the most exciting new voices in, in American theater. To produce the whole trilogy in the city um, is really important. One of the most diverse cities in the country and to be really producing this major writer in a robust way, three of the plays um, together, it's exciting and it's just really what we want to be about as a community.